Hi, my name's Becca from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Now today I want to show you how to do this project which combines two of my favourite parchment artists, Linda Williams and Tina Cox, both geniuses in the field and very dear friends of mine as well. So I'm going to be showing you how I did this little frame here. This is from a set called uh, Tina's Parchment Plates. These are fantastic little plates. Um, I got mine about nine months ago and they've never been filed away. They are my go-to plates because they, they're brilliant for smaller projects. So each one has an outer frame and an inner shape and you get a variety of shapes. So do go to the website to check those out. Fantastic little things that were, they are. I was so happy when they came out. What I also want to show you as well is how I did this grid work border here. And how I did that was by using another concept of Tina's, which is her pattern, straight pattern border grid, number one, and also the matching basic bold grid border plate. <laughs> that was a mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> so I did show you how to use these in a previous YouTube, but what I did is I, show, I, I demonstrated how to use it within the design, but this time I want to show you how to use it to get a lovely border around your work. I also want to show you um, the honeycomb effect here. That's on uh, Linda's Linda's bees, butterflies and flowers. The collection is called, and I'm going to be using Linda's bees. Absolutely beautiful little plates, and I'm going to be showing you how to get this nice coloured honeycomb effect. And my personal favourite is I'm going to be showing you Linda Williams' trick: how to do these springy bees. Now, if I just sort of tap it lightly there, can you see how he's just bouncing a little bit? He's so cute little fat bees. I just absolutely adore them. They're so cute. So without further ado, let's begin. So I'm going to start by putting in my frame. So I'm going to turn my light wave on. Oh, this is a fantastic piece of kit. Um, it just makes everything just that little bit clearer. And what we're going to start off with is Tina's parchment plates. Now for the project I just shown you, I used this one. But for this one, I fancy going with a hexagon to match up with the whole like bee honeycomb thing. So we have choices. You can either house this in the mini plate mate, which comes in the mini starter kit, or this is what you, you will get for your first instalment of the Clarity Groovy Club. You can use your Groovy Go plate mate, which houses A6 plates, but you'll notice that this is rattling around a bit. So all you need is one of our smaller spacers just to slot it in there nicely. But what I'm gonna to use today is your Made for Life, the starter kit plate mate. And even though it rattles in around here, all you do is add this insert collar to your starter kit plate mate, and then your baby plate will fit in there really nice and snug. So, I'm gonna attach my bit of parchment with my tabs, which I always find on my Groovy Guard. My Groovy Guard is so versatile. I use it as a palette. I use it to hold my work flat. I use it just to store my tabs on. You know, it's always there for me. It's it's brilliant. It's like it's like your best mate after your plate mate is your Groovy Guard. So I'm just gonna give my work a bit of wipe, a bit of a wipe with the tumble dryer sheet. Now this just helps the tool glide. And then what I'm gonna do, using my Groovy Guard, to hold my work flat, I'm going to be using my Pergamano number one tool and I'm simply just going to get into the groove and trace out the big square frame and the little hexagon frame. So there we have it. So by simply just taking the frame out, you can see here that we've now got, I, I think double lines look so smart on parchment. You know, that's the beautiful thing with Groovy. It's, it's the same result every single time that you will trace out these lines. You get the same crisp professional look. It's just absolutely fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is swap out my hexagon parchment plate for my square one because I want to use the flowers on this one so I've just popped that in there 
and you'll notice as well with the partialettes that all the outer lines match perfectly so the square that I've just traced from the hexagon plate is the same size as the square that I'm that I've got on this plate as well so all the partialettes have the same sized outer frame and what that means is it just makes it easier to mix and match so I've taken the frame from here but I can easily take the flowers from the next plate and they're in a perfect position in the corner the same as they would have been if you just traced directly from the previous plate so same as before I'm just going to use my number one tool get in the groove and I'm just going to trace out these four flowers around the corners So there we have it. We have, oh, struggling here. Eh? There we go. We have our four flowers perfectly centered in the corner of each of the frames. So as I was saying before, because the frames are the same size, they just slot perfectly and it all looks like it's matching in the row lined up nicely. So what I want to move on to next is how to get this lovely honeycomb pattern in now this did require a bit of like moving the parchment around with the square but i'm not entirely sure on this one because the hexagon is a slightly smaller shape so it might fit no it doesn't quite fit in you see how the pattern on the plate ends around here um so what we're going to have to do is just trace out to a certain point stop and then we're going to have to move the parchment around a bit but that's okay that's not a problem this is why you've just got this little corner because rather than sort of wasting more space with a bigger pattern you are able just to move the parchment around um and realign the pattern so you get more elements on your plate oh light wave i'm not done with you yet turn on so you get more elements on your plate um so yeah it's just a case of moving around a little bit so again i'm just going to get in the groove and off i whiz again in super fast motion because you know it's crazy it's great let's go super quick so there we are i've traced out as much of the pattern as i can um, see some of the pattern just comes above the line that I already embossed so all I did when I got to there was I just stopped tracing um, you don't have to hit a corner or anything you can literally just take your tool out and it will stop tracing um, so what I'm going to do is just move it along just a little bit and I'm going to try and align there we go can you see how the previous pattern that I traced out just slotted in when I shunted the parchment up a bit. So now, after I finish tracing this section, the entire part of the large hexagon from the parchment plate will be filled with a honeycomb. So off I go, quickie quickie zoomy zoomies. So there we go. Oh, light wave again. My fault. I keep knocking the little button there. I always do that. I need to be more careful. Anyway, I am a little bit tired after, you know, zooming around like that. It's just, I don't know how to do it. Anyway, there we go. We have our honeycomb pattern within the larger honeycomb. So I think the next step I'm going to move on to is I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, colouring. So what I did to colour in the honeycomb was I coloured initially on the back and then I just added the shading, the darker part of the shading, to the front of the card just to make it pop and look more like a 3D, 3D honeycomb. So what I'm going to use for this is my black mask. Oh, I just threw it away. There it is. So I've just got my black mask and I'm using the hard side here. Be, be careful that you don't use your soft side because the parchment can't tell the difference between a pencil and an embossing tool so it might end up uh, being embossed rather than coloured. So I'm going to be using my pergoliners for this and I'm going to get rid of these tabs. I'm just flinging everything about on now. So <laughs> I'm going to get rid of these tabs and I'm going to be focusing on the colouring on the back first. So we just want some like nice browns like a nice orange maybe it's a nice yellow oh yeah i think those will do and if i just bring this in for reference 
as well because I did this project about a year ago, nine months ago, a year ago. So I'm just going to refer back to it and what I'm going to do is start with the lightest colour. And I'm using the I'm using Pergolina pencils, which um, which are made by us in Pergamano. They are lovely creamy pencils. Um, you get thirty six of them in the box. There are sixteen blendable pencils or B pencils, and then there are twenty aqua pencils. <laughs> you just saw me look blankly that. Like for a second there's 20 aqua pencils that's it but you can interchange them you can use them together they're lovely and creamy they're just fantastic to work with so all I'm doing here is I added the yellow on this corner so I'll do that again so I've got B8 here and then what I did was I added a little bit of orange which is B9 in the center here and I just overlapped the yellow a bit and then in the corner, I use some of this brown B12. You can tell how much I love it because it's a lot smaller than the other two. I've obviously sharpened it quite a lot. And then I go back over the top with the B9 just to give it that orangey base coat. Now, if I flip that over, oh yeah, that's coming through really nicely. I wonder if it would be easier to see on a white sheet. Oh, my groovy guard. There we go. That's easier to tell. So can you see how just by blending there, I've gotten like I've got light in this corner and dark down this corner. And to bring this side out a bit more, I'm going to use my lovely ready brown B13. And I'm just going to add very lightly because I'm aware I'm on the front and trying to avoid these embossed lines. I'm just going to add two lines of red here. There we go. Can you see the difference in that? I'll hold this up to the camera you can see how just by adding that little bit of ready brown in the corner that really made it pop so next i'm going to show you how to do these flowers as you know you don't want to watch me color in a whole honeycomb i can show you other tricks so the flowers you know are quite simple so i use the same orange and the same yellow so what i do to get this nice blend on the flower here is with the lighter color the yellow which is b8 i flick in from the outside of the flower and i'm just turning my work as i go always turn your work so it's comfortable for you never never um like stretch your wrist to an uncomfortable level you know make your work come to you so i'm just going to flick in from the outside with the lighter color and just go all the way around then when i've done that I'm going to take my darker colour, in this case the B9, the orange, and flick out from the centre. And because I'm flicking out the opposite way that I was going with my yellow pencil, they'll start to blend in the centre. When you flick, you press heavier on the parchment when you first lay your pencil down. So when you flick up, I don't know the camera can see, you get a lighter pressure here, which means that the colours are a little bit more faded up there. So when the two flicking areas meet, if this is making any sense, it doesesn't my wonky brain, then the two colours will combine and you'll get this nice graduated faded colour. And you can smooth it out. I quite like the texture on flowers. I love the texture of pencils on flowers, but you can't, oh, squashing my bees. I'm squashing my bees, moving them out of the way before I squash any more. Um, I quite like the texture on flowers of just using pencils, but you can use your dorsal oil to, to um, what do you call it? Oil it out, blend it, blend it out. That's it. Do I get another prize for that? No, no, she doesn't. Well done for using your words. <laughs> so then going back to the back, all I did simply was just lay some green down on all the leaves. This is like, uh, it's, it's, like coloring with numbers really like there's no skill to this part you literally just laying down some color because what i want to happen on this project is i want the designer paper to do a lot of the work for me um because parchment is translucent translucent our designer papers were designed by our lovely barbara using alcohol inks and they come in a variety of patterns and um, we have four of the paper pads we have Indian Summer, Northern Lights, Shenandoah, Rainbow River. My personal favourite is 
Indian summer and just by sort of adding colors that are similar to the color palette you're going to use which you know my chosen paper was Indian summer this beautiful background is my personal favorite what a lot of people do is they use the paper and then choose their colors based on the colors on that paper and it just helps tie it all in a bit easier especially if you're not too confident with color so that's what I did with this project so whereas this here doesn't look too impressive at the minute it's just you know your bog standard colored in flower with a bit of shading on the honeycomb when you actually see it with the designer paper you can really see how the colors pop and it just brings the whole project to life okay so that's pretty much what i did for the base in terms of color so we've looked at the honeycomb we've looked at the flowers and now i'm going to show you how to do this border here so in a previous video i did show you how to use these borders within the project like within the actual frame itself but this time i'm gonna show you how to use them for like a border to go around your project 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 i'm having massive trouble with my words today <laughs> they're just not coming so what i need to do this job super foam on top of my light wave um, it's a translucent piece of foam, uh, very thick, one centimetre thick, so perfect to do your uh, deperforating. Um, and it just means the light from the light wave can shine through and you can just see a bit more clearly when you're perforating. Now, on this straight pattern grid, the design that we want is this one here, which I believe is actually the same one that I used for the previous project that I showed you. I think it was the dream catcher. So you can definitely tell which one my favourite is. <laughs> So this was a wonderful concept designed by Tina and I'm just going to show you quickly how to use it. And my groovy gone, I've gone walkies. Do you know, do you ever find that your craft stuff just grows legs and walks away? I know mine does. So I'm going to line up. There we go. I'm just going to line the bottom of the dots of this pattern with the edge of my frame. And I can already tell what I've done wrong. <laughs> what I've done wrong. This is the back of my parchment. For pacing, you want to work on the front. So, thank God I caught that. So I'm just moving my parchment around till it lines up. Attaching with my groovy tabs. These are brilliant. They don't leave any residue. They're very strong. Hold your parchment in place. And when, after a while, they do start to get a little bit worn. I actually use them to stick things up on my fridge and whatnot. So, you know, multi-use. So, what I'm going to need now is my two-needle bold tool, which I have right... Oh, no. Nope. I don't have right here. I have right here. There we go. So, this is a bold grid. So, what you're going to need uh, for this grid is our bold tools. Now, we have three bold tools I believe we have a one needle bold which I would recommend doing this if you're new to this and you just want to take it a bit slower we have our four needle bold um, which would work for this but I don't have mine today so I've got my two needle bold and basically just by whizzing around with my two needle bold I'm just going twice as fast as I would do with the one needle bold same with the four needle bold you'll be going four times as fast then so now that my work's lined up, I'm just going to use my groovy guard to hold the design flat. I'm going to use the oval aperture just because it's slightly bigger in the center. And then I'm simply just going to pace through these holes. You can see how quick this is. These are precision drilled. So you will get an excellent, perfect result every single time. And, you know, I'm not being too careful because where I try and pace, where there's no hole, you can see I've just tried it there. It doesn't leave a mark. So you can only really leave a mark in the parchment where the holes are. So I'm just going to whiz along this border now and just finish off this line. So we have one line of holes. Now the concept with this is you perforate first using the pattern and then you swap the patterned drilled grid out for a basic one. So this is going to be for the embossing. So when you turn it round, now I like to use the top row of hole, drilled holes in this because I just find it a lot easier to line up. 
So I've got one eye on this side and one eye on this side and as long as they match up, the rest of it will too. So now I've got my groovy tabs on the wrong way because I flipped the parchment over. So just bear with me a sec whilst I have a wrestle with the groovy tab. Right, so I've won my epic fight with the groovy tabs. I am the victor. So I'm gonna go back to doing what I was doing before. And what I'm doing is I'm just lining up the pierced holes that I've just made with the top row of dots on the basic grid. Now this is meant to act as sort of a counter, like a partner for the pattern grid that you've just seen. So I'm just gonna dig out I'm going to be using my groovy tool for this, which has a fine stylus end and it has a little ball end, this one. So number one tool, a number two tool with a ball. So I'm going to be using the number two tool with a ball. And the concept behind this is, is that where the holes appear, where the pattern wasn't on the other one, you can just emboss out these dots. It basically just, it's like, a, it's like grid work made easy, I would say. So because I've perforated out the pattern, I can see where then I need to emboss and then I don't have to do all the, the counting on a basic grid. It's just, it's, it's just all done for you. Tina's done all the hard work and all you have to do is just line it up and fill out the missing spaces. Now I am missing some areas deliberately. Like you can see I'm missing out the dots around here and I'm missing out the dots down here and that's because I know that I want to cut around there I want to peek up cut around there so there's no point in me embossing them dots there so I'm just going to whiz around and just finish this line are you ready for me to go really really quick again I'm going to knock myself out soon so there we have it I've whizzed along my row I've added the dots in the blank areas where there was no holes on the pattern grid. And if I just show you what I've done on my black mat here, you can see I've got lovely uniformed holes and lovely uniformed dots across one side. So this is going to be one element of our border. So rather than boring you and showing all three of the other sides doing the exact same thing, I'm just going to do one more pattern in this corner because I do want to show you how to turn the corner. So I'm just going to actually go grab yourself a quick cup of tea and I'm just going to quickly do this. All right. See you in a sec. Right. I'm back and I've just done one more little pattern around the corner. I didn't do the whole thing. I'm just doing this one little area here just to show you how to turn this corner. It's quite simple. So still sticking with your basic grid, the one with lots of holes in. So on the front of my parchment, I'm going to line up the corner with the top. There we go. Until I see a perfect row of dots just turning that corner. Then I'm just going to get my tool into the holes and turn the corner. It is as simple as that. So by just using the grid, I've still got the nice uniformed holes there. And then I would just pico cut around that. Right, so weapon of choice. Mine is the exclusive scissors. And how I like to cut is with the blades face curving upwards. And I put my thumb and my index finger through the handles like this. And I use my other fingers to support. So what I'm going to do, or how to complete this project is I would cut all the way around the outside here and let's pretend that I have done the whole border and like you would have you would have went around the whole project so all you do is you just do that all the way around so I'll just show you quickly so get into your two of your holes now parchment scissors are sharp right to the very tip so you only need the tips of your scissors in the very very tips so you put them in then you bring them down, then you twist, then you snip. Turn your work around, never go to your work, always make your work come to you. So in, down, twist, snip. Now you'll notice that the holes between the corners here are a little bit bigger 
there's a slightly bigger gap than the holes between here, than the gap between these holes here and here, for example. So bigger gap here, smaller gap here and there. And what that does is it will create a larger pico. Um, but it honestly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're all the same size or not. It will still look lovely. So I'm just going to quickly whiz around. So in, down, twist, snip. In, down, twist, snip. And I will be right back with you in a sec once I've done some zoomies. So there we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut away the section that I just pico cut. So you can see how this border will come together. Oh, don't go too far. There we go. So get rid of that. And you can see now how just by cutting around the outside of Tina's pattern grid, you can get um, this beautiful, beautiful border pattern. So it's not just used for inside designs. You can use it to create intricate lace borders as well. And if I show you the finished piece, you'll notice as well that I cut little crosses out in the centre of each one as well. Now I could have took, taken that a step further and cut out these sections here, but I quite like the look of uniformed holes. So the beauty of these grids is that you can take it as far or as little as you like, as what you're comfortable with. They look gorgeous with the uniformed holes, uniform dots. You don't have to do any cutting if you don't want to. Just have a play and see what you're comfortable with, see what you're happy with and see what works well for you. So what I'm gonna do now is Go grab a spare bit of parchment. So get the kettle on. I fancy a coffee this time, I think. Uh, get your best shortbread biscuits out and I'll see you just in a jiffy. Welcome back. I managed to find my spare bit of parchment. And this, this part, I'm going to be showing you how to do the springy bees here. So if I turn the card flat, you should be able to see that there's like a concertina-like effect. On the bottom of these bees so you've got the actual main bee here and then it just wraps around on this bit of parchment here just to create the spring so i'm going to be showing you how to do that next so what i need i'll just set the project aside is my scrap bit of parchment i need my number one embossing tool and i'm just going to give this a little bit of a oh there we go i want it up as bright as possible just because it helps me with my eyes so i'm just gonna Give this a wipe with the tumble dryer sheet because I haven't used this piece yet and it could be any sort of scrap you've got knocking about. So what I'm going to do, I'm not even going to bother attaching it because it's such a small piece that I'm going to be uh, embossing today. So I'm just going to trace out this base. So what I want is I want his body, I want his wings, I want his head and don't worry about his feet or antenna because you're going to pico cut around that. So there we go. We have our little bee cute little bee so what you need to do the concertina effect is when i just go back to my light with but what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch back to my parchment plates now you can use any any groovy plate at all that has a straight line so all you want still working on the reverse of the parchment is you want just a piece about an inch long or so so just coming from his little bum you just want to trace out the center of his bum just a line about an inch long that is all you need so i'll get rid of these plates and i'll show you what we're up to so there we go we have our b and we have our line as well now this line is going to form the basis of our concertina um so i'm not going to show you how to color in because it's pretty much just the same as what i showed you earlier we just alternate in the black and white color so what i want to show you is the freehand perforating around him so for that i'm going to bring back my super foam um perfect partner to my light wave and i need my two needle bold tool so to freehand perforate around him what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put two holes just next to the line on him anywhere that i fancy and then what you do is you rock if i turn a little bit as i rock the needle back so you catch the previous hole you made with the needle then when you have you can use that as almost a pivot so i'm going to pivot around the b and then when i'm happy with the position i'm going to bring the tool upright 
and I'm going to go down just to the middle part of the needle. That's where the needle's at its thickest. I think it just puts extra strain on the parchment if you go too far down too much of the time. And when you get used to this, you'll get into like a nice rocking motion here and you'll get and you'll stop thinking about it it'll just become muscle memory and it's actually it's a really pleasurable thing to do freehand perforating and it's very important to always remember to bring your tool upright because if you don't you see there there's a slightly more oval hole on the B and that's because I didn't bring my tool completely upright. The key to good pico cutting is to have a good basis in the perforating holes to start off with. So always ensure that you bring your tool completely upright. So then what we do when we get to the line is we just want to start perforating next to it, not directly on it because you want to go around the whole line. So by that, I mean, I'm just going to put a point in the top here, then I'm going to turn my work and then I'm just going to come back down the other side of the line and this will make like a nice good basis for the concertina fold for your springy bee. So I'm just going to whiz around the rest of him. And there we have it. So we have all of our holes around our bee. And I'm gonna put my tool cap back on these because I keep stabbing myself with these. So, you know, our tool caps, the new ones that we've got in, they're very durable, hard to break, and they fit really nicely on here. So it just keeps your tools nice and secure and keeps your hands nice and safe. So now we have our bee and we've perforated around him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same as I did earlier is pico cut them out and because i've already shown you uh one time in this video what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do my little zoomy method and i'm just gonna whiz around him quickly so there we go we have our little bee and you can see that there is so much spare parchment left here, you can make a whole hive of these really. So I'm just gonna put that to one side for now and take a look at our tiny bee. Now, <laughs> it might, I might be teaching you how to suck eggs here, but I would say if these is the last thing to do because I've actually made them first before, sneezed and blew them away. <laughs> so just be aware of that. And because I just think he looks a little bit sad on coloured, I'm just going to do another zoomy and I'm just going to quickly colour him in. So just bear with me one second. I'm going to use my black and my yellow and I'm just going to, on the reverse, just give him a quick colour in. So there we go. Finished zooming now. For now. So now I have my little coloured bee. So I just quickly coloured them in on the back. There's no special technique to it, no blending, just scribbled some colour down. And what I did, if I've still got it around there, there it is, is on the finished piece, I don't know if you can see, but if I twang him a bit, it's a good word in a twang. So if I twang him a bit, he's got a bit of sparkle on his wings, can you see there? So there we go, he's got a little bit of subtle sparkle on his wings and how I did that was I used the Wing Costella pen. So all I did was on the front, on top, I just quickly, just very lightly, applied a bit of Wing Costella to him. And maybe he's, there we go, you can see the sheen on him. So, to get him as springy as the rest of them, all you do is you fold the concertina down where his bum is. So can you see where I fold there? And then what I would do is fold it again where his head is. So you're making like almost like a Z pattern. So this is the bit here that will sit on the parchment. And when you bring him up, you've got a nice springy bee. So it's just a nice simple concertina effect. It's simple, but it's so effective. And then what I do is I will just straighten that out again. I think the good thing is with parchment that when you bend it, it is bent. So just be a little bit careful on this bit. Take your time, don't rush because you know, there's no one bending it once it's gone. So just using some Crafters Companion Glue Runner, just gently on the end of that bit there. I'm just gonna take my little bee, 
then I'm going to pop him, oh where should I put him this time, I think I'll put him down here, there we go, oh there we are, and I'm going to use a groovy tool, just to make sure he stays down there, now these two have been attached to their cards for about a year now, so they're not quite as springy, but you can see how lovely he is, look at him, he's just buzzing around with his little bee friends, being peaceful <laughs> I had to just once just one time so there you have it so I'll give you a quick recap of what we've done I'll bring in the actual card which is right in front of me <laughs> so what we've done is I've shown you how to use um, Tina's parchlets, par parchlet frames and interchange them with each other to get the base pattern and um, I've shown you how to do the honeycomb I've shown you how to get the honeycomb colour effect with it. Um, I've shown you a bit of blending on the flowers, a bit of dry blending. Um, I've shown you how to do a border with uh, Tina's pattern grids, another amazing idea by our lovely Tina. And finally, I've shown you how to get these gorgeous springy bees. And I just want to sit here and twang him for the rest of the day because it's quite fun. Look at him go. Um, so all I did to finish this card off was I used a piece of Indian summer designer paper, my personal favourite, you'll find I use it for a lot of my projects, but we do have other paper packs available out there, Northern Lights, Shenandoah, Rainbow River, so go to our website and check it out, designed by our lovely Barbara Gray, and they were originally designed to make parchment come to life, so as you can see, it, it is stunning, it, it really just brings the whole thing together really nicely. Um, and then I simply, I, I put some brads through that. So I've used the pastel brads. And what I've done is I've put just put them in the centre of my flowers. We have got another YouTube um, showing you how to attach brads. So please do check that out. But by putting on the centre of the flower, it almost becomes part of the flower. So it becomes a decorative element as well as a clever way to attach your parchment to the paper. And then I just mounted it on some white card. So there we have it. I really hope that you enjoyed this project today. Um, Barbara blogs every single day, so for more inspiration, head out over, head out and over to www.barbaragrayblog.com to check out what she's up to. Um, everything that I've seen today, everything that I've seen today, everything you've seen today that I've used is on our website, www.claritystamp.com. Uh, we have an ingredients list made just along the bottom of the description here. If you click, you'll get a download to the ingredients list. And that includes everything that I've used today, which you can find on our website, along with a whole array of other goodies. Um, if you like watching myself, if you like watching Maria, Paul and our lovely Barbara, please like and subscribe and stay in touch with us. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye bye now.